In yet another farm murder, three people have been killed on a farm outside of the free state town of Lintley. The whole family was wiped out when the father, mother and their two-year-old daughter were murdered. They shot it miss the first time at Artin, eh? And then they took Volna and Wilmin out of the bucky, and here they struggled all around, here all around the house. Ati and them, the packages were all around here. They said there was everywhere blood against the walls, and then they said they had a struggle, and Ati fell there. He could not longer str struggle with them. He fell there. So the guy hit him over his head with a panga and the other one with the knife and the other one with the garden fork. And apparently they said um, he, they found the garden fork through his neck. I assume Volna was standing on the steps. They were busy taking it in. They were just waiting for them to finish Ati off. So Volmin ran here and here was it's full of blood and Wilmin stepped into her father's blood and she was running here all around. When you said that they found blood on Wilmingi's feet, I mean, that's one of the most horrible things I've ever heard. Her father was everything in Wilmin's life. When I think, just think, there she goes to Ati and Ati is no longer breathing. And she's standing there next to Ati. What is Wilmin thinking to herself? What happened now to my dad? What's the matter with my dad? How, why did they hurt my dad? And now she heard some mom scream and yell and try to get loose to help them. And I couldn't even imagine what's, what's going through a little head. And when somebody grab you and where are you going now? You're going away from your mom and dad. How are you going to scream? What, what do you think is going to happen to yourself? And they, they brought her to this little room and I sh he shoot her there and they left her in a box because they, they found the box half full of blood. The blood was drying on her feet. So she must have lied with her head first in the box. Then they took Volna from the front door, uh, from the kitchen door. They took her into their room where they forced her to open the safe for them. There was Ati's firearms and a little bit of money. And then they said to Vilna she must sit on her knees and they shot her through the head. And then they took Wilmin and they took her out of the box and then they threw her on Vilna, if she was her animal. South Africa comes out of this violent past, but in essence we are still violent. Would you say that the farmer then, um, as a group, is under attack? I have no doubt that this relatively small sector of the South African economy is under attack. Um, and why I say this is that irrespective of the prominence which farm attacks has in South Africa, it is continuing. Violent crimes on farms are unique in the sense that there is a very little relationship between the violence used against the victims and the obvious motive for the crime. In many cases, a cell phone or a wallet is, is taken. When the victim was subjected to the most gruesome physical maltreatment you can think of. Usually this, this torture goes on for hours because they feel safe in that group context, 
because the collective brain is working and you feel safe because the, the farm is usually quite isolated. Those who attack these farms would know, and they often do their homework properly before they carry out an attack, they would know that even if uh, a panic button is pressed, that it would take 15 or 20 minutes before there's any response, which tells them that they have so much time to carry out whatever they intend doing. It is estimated compared to international figures that we've got 700% more farm attacks in our country. It's extremely violent, our farm attacks. Much more violent than any other place in the world. In the rural areas, uh, one out of every eight farm attacks ends up in, in a murder. This is where this is to some extent different from the urban areas where the chances of being killed during a house robbery are far less than, than you would find on a farm. You can't explain to anybody how brutal that was. But you can see on his arms and everywhere that he actually stopped and on his fist and things there was marks that, that, that showed that he actually put up a fight. His hands was open, his knuckles was open, and his face was totally like disfigured. So there was a huge fight here. And from there they actually pulled him um, behind his bucky with a chain all the way back to the store where they actually left him. Sorry, so when you say that he was pulled, they actually tied him to his vehicle? They tied him, tied him to his ankle, um, to his own vehicle, and then they pulled him. For what reason, I mean, once again, I can just speculate. But if you look at the road and if you look at everything here, it's not an even road. It's, I mean, three people against one, <sighs> pulling behind his bucky with a chain. The, the autopsy said that uh, he was still alive when he was pulled because there was a huge bump that burst his liver. Um, and that was the fatal blow to end everything. I, I don't even think you can kill an animal like that. feeling to be standing in a, in a place where you know that somebody has been murdered. He was dragged in here behind his vehicle and he died because of that. And the question that still remains was this hate. Is this one of those hate crimes that all the farmers are talking about? You come here, you see this, and it's difficult to, to argue with them. It's difficult to understand what else this can be except for a hate crime. And now we have Julius Malema, the ANC Youth League leader, who says that all whites are criminals, that they are going to take the land back without compensation, and that if the farmers give back 80% of their land, all farm attacks will stop. The recent utterance by the president of the ANC Youth League, Mr. Malema, when he stated that if farmers are willing to give away 80% of their land, the farm attacks will stop. How can one explain that? That creates a direct link between land and the kind of violence we experience on farms. South Africans are being murdered at disproportionate rates. But I can also go to the subcultures and the subdenominations, and there's my culture, the Africana. I can also go to them and say, you know, if you're a banker and you work in a bank, you're a demographic. If all of a sudden bankers are wiped out disproportionately, I can go to bankers and say, is this what you are used to? When they are not used to that, there's a problem and it should be investigated. I'm telling you, I'm an Afrikaner. I don't care if other tribes don't care how many of their people are murdered. I care how many of my people are murdered. I happen to be a minority. It's very easy to get rid of my, my group because they're so small. Genocide for me is a very small amount of people to lose. If your nation is five people strong and I take two away, it is genocide. You can't tell me two is not genocide. In this case, two is genocide. This is for the farmers in South Africa who's been murdered. Just under 2,000 crosses now. Every cross has its own story. We want to tell it for the whole world what symbolized this white cross is here.